welcome to our tutorial on how to make a personal server out of a pogo plug version 2 there is a couple of different things you can do with it and I will be making tutorials on that one's to make a web server another one is your own personal uh, private git repository server and you can even make your own printers network printer server take a uh, wired printer and make it to where you can print from any computer within the network and those are a couple of options that I will be making tutorials on but the first part first step that we need to do is prepping our pogo plug version 2 and you want to make sure that the model number you can look at the label on the bottom of your pogo plug is a pogo dash e02 our pogo dash e02 g i think is the letter but i'm just using the e02 a uh, very common one I've bought two of them now and they're really cheap so anyways you want to make sure that if, if those are not the model numbers for your pogo plug do not follow the instructions of this tutorial you'll ruin your pogo plug um, and there's always a chance that you could ruin your pogo plug even with the right model so proceed with caution but the first thing we're going to do is install Arch Linux and that's going to be the foundation of all of our tutorials we must first put our alternative third-party firmware on it and so let's get started with that the first thing you need to do is go ahead and uh, open log into my.pogoplug.com and under your pogo plug under your settings you'll want to find your security settings and then you want to scroll down now I have two different pogo plug devices uh, you just want to make sure that SSH access is uh, enabled for both of them and you'll want to go ahead and save your changes and then you can go ahead and go to your router menu after you've made sure that these are both uh, enabled go ahead and go to your router menu um, mine happens to be located at uh, 12.168.0.1 uh, another one previous router links this router I had it was uh, .1.1 but either way um, You'll have to maybe look at your router manual if you don't know how to get to this. Uh, go ahead and log into that. All right. Once you log in, you'll want to find a uh, table. Uh, mine's under status. I go down and find a table of all uh, connected clients and what I'll be what you'll be looking for is you're gonna be looking for any of them that do not have a name because see all my other devices have names um, I know one of my pogo plugs there is under 194 because I've assigned it the best thing to do is look at the bottom of your pogo plug on the label and you will see that your pogo plug has a Mac address and when you find that Mac address usually take the last four digits or enough to find it I, I've looked at mine and mine matched this right here so D5 uh, colon 46 and so then I come over here and I can see it's 199 so this is important because this is how we're going to SSH uh, into our route our pogo plug to start the configuration so once you've done that you'll need a uh, an SSH client such as putty um, it's a free software you can download uh, doesn't really require being installed. I've, I've got a little bit different version that I'm going to be using. So go ahead and open that. Alright, I'm using uh, Bitvice SSH client. And we'll want to type in the host, which I determined mine was 199. Uh, you'll want to go here to the username and enter root. And then you'll go ahead and click login or connect, whichever way yours works. All right, and it's going to prompt me for a password. If you have not set the password, it will be CE admin. And then click OK. All right, so that's not my password. It's going to use my other one. All right, then look at all. You should come to your command prompt screen. At this point, we'll begin to run the uh, commands there to initialize our pogo plug. 
for uh, the install. I currently do not have any USB drives connected to my Pogo plug, so I'm going to start off with this with no drives connected. Alright, to start with, we're going to go ahead and run kill all HBWD. Alright, next thing we need to do is go ahead and go CD temp. And you're going to want to type in wget http jeff design dot com forward slash d by u boot install u boot d zero dot sh. All right, downloaded that. And the next thing we need to do is go ahead and change uh, change mode plus X install u boot td 0sh alright and then we're going to want to go ahead and run that now and just period forward slash install I'll press tab to go ahead and cheat a little bit and press enter alright now it's asking me that if I agree to this um, go ahead and press type OK and press enter to continue would you like to disable Pogo plug services Alright, so yes, we want to go ahead and uh, disable that. Oh, crud. Alright. Now, the next thing we need to do, we'll go ahead and uh, insert our USB drive now. Now they recommend using at least a one gigabyte flash drive or larger. Uh, our USB drive doesn't matter. Um, I'm using a four gig, so I'm good. Uh, the next thing we'll need to do is run uh, F disk. Make sure your flash drive doesn't have any important information on it either, by the way, because it will wipe it out whenever we run this. So we'll do S bin slash F disk and device SDA. All right, now we're going to type a series of commands. We're going to type O. We'll clear out any partitions on the drive. We'll type P to list partitions. There shouldn't be any partitions left. And that is correct. There's no partitions. Now we type N. P for primary. Then 1 for the first partition on the drive. Press, press Enter to accept default values. I press enter again to accept default value. All right, and now we can go ahead and exit by typing W. All right. Now the next thing we need to do is to create the ex2 file system. So we'll type wget http colon forward slash slash arch linux arm.org forward slash os forward slash pogo plug mke2fs all right and it grabbed that so we want to go ahead and uh, change the mode 755 mke2fs all right then we'll go ahead and run that Now go ahead and create our uh, file system. All right. 
took a few seconds to do that, no biggie. Now the next thing we need to do is uh, make the directory USB and then we need to mount our flash drive on that directory SDA1 to USB alright we want to do CD USB then we're going to go ahead and get our Arch Linux ARM long command there might take a minute or two to download all right now it's finished we need to uh, untar or uncompress XZVFR uh, file that we just downloaded. Oh, by the way, you can press Tab to go ahead and type that all out. Um, you don't have to sit there and type it up. You can press Tab to cheat. Now this may take a uh, take a while. I fast forward the video a little bit so you if you have not finished uh, un uncompressing your uh, your pogo plug you might want to go ahead and pause the video for a minute but uh, I finished up on un uncompressing it and so now we're ready to uh, go ahead and continue I'm gonna go ahead and start by removing the uh, archive because we don't need it anymore the uh, zip folder or tar tarball and so we'll go ahead and type RM and then remove that uh, save some space anyways and so now we need to type sync this can take a little while so mine didn't so the next thing we need to do is uh, clean up and reboot so we'll go uh, CD period period then we'll do U mount USB so we're unmounting our USB drive now I'm gonna go ahead and show you my pogo plug so you can see what the status light does whenever we reboot all right now that we're ready to reboot you can see uh, my pogo plug I have my flash drive plugged into the front right there and then we see we've got a green status light which means it's currently online still and so the next part we need to do we need to go ahead and type in uh, forward slash sbin forward slash reboot and then okay my screen went away alright and the status light went off on my pogo plug with any luck at all it'll come back on and it should be orange okay and it's back online now if you're waiting for it to turn green which was my first mistake the first time I tried this it won't turn green so don't worry yourself on that now the next thing we need to do we need to go ahead and reconnect via SSH In order to connect to SSH, you're probably going to have to figure out how to flush out your SSH key because it's not going to be valid anymore. It'll be on the same. Uh, oh, here we go. So it, it goes ahead and warns me that the uh, host key has changed. That's that's okay. I'll accept that. All right. And so now the password is going to be different too. It's no longer going to be what we had before. This time Arch Linux has changed it to root. So it's user root and password root. 
click OK. Okay, it's not working. Ah, there we go. Alright, so cool deal. Now, once we get that pulled back up, we should see it look like this right here. And this is the basis for our Pogo Plug server. Now, if you want to turn the light green, I'll go ahead and show you how to do that right quick. Alright, so the first thing we can do, we can go ahead and do a echo none oh, uh, greater than sys class LEDs status and then now we need to do backslash blue backslash health forward slash trigger all right we can see that turned off the uh, light on my pogo plug now the next line we need to do is do echo default on and sys class LEDs status green health and then trigger all right and there's our green light now doing it from the command line like that will only work until we restart our pogo plug if we lose power or anything it'll go back to orange so if you want to make it permanently turn on green every time pogo plug is fully loaded um, what we can do we can add this to our line using the vi editor oh i hate vi editor tell me nano is available oh good we got nano okay so i'm going to do nano and then etc rc.local all right I'm not sure why this is empty but we'll go ahead and add these lines to it so we'll do echo none Alright, and then uh, hold, you press the control key and press X and it'll ask you if you want to save your changes. We'll go ahead and click uh, Y and then it'll prompt you for the file name so we'll just go ahead and press enter to accept that. Alright, and now whenever we restart our pogo plug it should uh, uh, it should go ahead and turn green on for us from now on. Um, Thanks for watching this tutorial. By the way, if you want to know how to revert it back to the original firmware, look on my channel. I should have a tutorial on how to do that. If it's not there, it should be there very soon. And I'll show you how to reverse what we've just done and restore your Pogo plug back to where, uh, like the factory condition. And anyways, thanks for watching the tutorial and check out some of my other ones on what else you can do with a Pogo plug now that you have uh, modified the firmware.